Bonjour. Je vous présente Bia. Hello. Uh, I want to present you uh, a little girl. She lives in Rio, and she's 11. And her school is going to be replaced by a car park for the World Cup, uh, for the World Cup football. And it's, 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 this is one of the 10 best public schools in the country. And this was only learned by the press, including the headmaster. There was no governmental uh, information given. So there was a feeling of lack of power on the part of the whole school. So Bia, this little girl, is not the only one to feel that she had no power in Rio. So a lot of inequality in Rio. So it's one of the most repressive uh, governments. Miguel, as I am, I am, I've been able to live on the outskirts of these problems because I, 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 I lived with somebody who was in a, in a, in a, favela and was brought up by a, a cleaning lady and we didn't even have um, we didn't have uh, good sanitary uh, utilities now in one one percent in in one there will be a very very small percentage of the world holding all the riches of the world in a year and this is only going to reinforce Rein, this is going to reinforce the inequality of power. So it is extremely extraordinary in the world of society where we're distributing, we're distributing, we're distributing debt and parts. Everything is technically, technically allowed. It is this amazing strength to be able to f emancipate and, and have collective uh, action. It is not predetermined. We, it's not inscribed. It is endemic. It is unforeseeable. It is it is in collaboration with difference. It is it is regulated by gift and not debt. It, it doesn't belong to anybody in particular. Power have, are things that have always been discussed. And in this match, more than ever, power enters with many more players on the on the patch, on the football pitch. And, um, and crushes equalities. We have a crisis without precedence. The population no longer believes in the political institutions and the democratic institutions that are currently in place. And currently, they are busy uh, demonstrating. So what about the Arab Spring? Occupy Wall Street. The young Brazilians. These are these are social movements in the street, on the web, and there's a multitude. Multitudes are pre, are replacing the, the 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 usual ways of doing things. These there's 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 internet is replacing urban demonstrations, and and everything happens nowadays on Facebook, and these multiple different ways, different ways of using power with a capital P. We, the old and original powerful structures are becoming obsolete. The elected memberships and, and, the, and the usual powerful institutions are becoming like old-fashioned telephone boxes, aren't they? They're obsolete. Nobody really realizes why or knows and thinks that they're useful. And, and they're, starting to, they're starting to develop new ways of communicating, like mobile telephones. So, they, they may present themselves like smartphones, but we know that in reality, old telephones are, are just dinosaurs to us, aren't they, nowadays? And, and these are going to replace the perverse methods of power. The concentration of a lot of power in a lot, few hands develops a system that is easily corrupted. So we've got to have a, a vigilant, a vigilant society that can create a powerful method of countering the existing powerful institutions. So society wants to be involved, but we don't necessarily know, nor have methods or tools to know how to make this happen. And and counter the existing institutions. How do we do this? This is the major question. By, when I thought about this, I thought that uh, in 2011, I thought I, I wanted to share this, this idea, for example. 
I, I wanted to share this. And this is a, a follow-up to a technological problem. But it is also a group of organizations, a communal organizations, a, a network of citizens. The, so the decisions were taken uh, in, in Rio. Here, for it, it's, 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 it's a bit like um, a pressure cooker. Any citizen, any citizen can suddenly become mobilized within 10 minutes. That what you have to do, first of all, you decide the, dis the person's making the decision, and then he publishes online what he wants to do. Everybody can be involved with this cause and can link directly with the person he wants to. It's not a petition. It's not an online petition like we're all used to. It's not that at all. You put your name down, you put your mail address in, and then you click on send, and then the, dis the decision maker will receive your personal message. Now, imagine that one day, in just one day, 20,000 people, 20,000 people sent 20,000 mails to one mailbox with the same request. That day has come. This is the day when a little girl of 11 year old girl who wanted to save save her school did this and this is Bia Bia who I told you about and the the mailbox was the governor of Rio so first of all the governor of Rio replied first of all what he did he made a promise he said I'll build you a new a new school but he didn't didn't commit of course he, he didn't do anything to reassure parents or, or school children and then and then of course the holidays came up so so and that meant that the school was going to be demolished even more quickly. So webcams were installed in front of the school in order to, in order to stream the information uh, on guard, it was called, on guard, and stream the information to, to people who wanted to watch it, on guard. This is basically Big Brother, if you like. It's, it's the citizens who are actually uh, keeping watch on the state, Big Brother in reverse. So. So these people got involved, 10,000 people, uh, in order to, 20,000 people, in order that they could watch the bulldozers during the during the night, and and then they they had a system whereby they could all be alerted in case there was a a, a threat. What happened was that the school was saved. Bia is 13 today, she, and uh, her school is still standing. There are other ways of um, doing the same sort of things on this platform. You can, Jovita, Jovita is a mother of somebody who disappeared. Jovita decided also to, to do something. She wanted to create, she created, she created in Rio de Janeiro a huge success by creating a system whereby people could search out people who had disappeared. 6,000 people had disappeared and it was this was a huge success. But let's come back to telephone pressure. It works more or less a bit like mail pressure. But but what you do is you use your mobile number. The system calls you back and you get in touch with the 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 the, 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 the decision maker's office and then you say what you want and you can say hi uh, loud and clear what you want. And it means there are no cross calls and there's one call gives rise to another gives rise to another. And sometimes there can be 2,000 calls in a day to the same number. That's that's another uh, that's another thing. Let's come back to Bia and our protagonist. She is she is responsible for this enormous victory, amongst several others. Since 2011, we've we've had lots of victories since the creation, uh, particularly for for example the refuse collection and. And we're actually trying to prevent people who are corrupted from taking posts in the uh, in the government. So we have managed to change several several requests. This is this is now inspiring lots of entrepreneurs to create their own actions. And with them, we're sharing our methodology and our technological platform, which I'm going to show you. So this is San Paulo, the case of San Paulo, and various Brazilian towns. So together, what we're doing is we're creating a series of towns who are linked, and are named called Nossas Cidades. 
and in 2016 we're going to present in other in other towns we believe very believe, very sincerely that if citizens get involved in their own towns that we can contribute to the construction of a world that is more uh, with more solidarity more sustainable and will last longer international politics actually starts off from towns because towns is the privileged space for participation this is where the citizen can have most impact and this is why we need we need democratic towns and we we need more than elected members we need to be able to distribute and decentralize decision making in order that it's distributed to the population that doesn't mean to say that uh, standard institutions aren't welcome they do have their place but they can't be the only people who are involved in the decision making process and even if they are welcome we have to say that Marie Antoinette yeah would would um, uh, we, do, we want to avoid a Marie Antoinette situation in the future. And this is what we want to uh, communicate. We want to aim for a more democratic society. I know that it's not obvious to understand this for some people and to accept it. Me, first and foremost, I've given up two years of my life uh, I, uh, in the antechamber of Ena, where uh, doing a master's in, in for the school, and I realize it's not always able, difficult to understand how these decision-making processes should be clearly distributed. But I can assure you, in a favela in Rio, the citizen is much easy. It's much easier for the person to be able to determine what he needs and what he wants to be able to communicate to the member of parliament, and he is completely able to do this and to be able to protect his own territory. He's capable of doing it. He is capable to be involved in, in the decision-making process. The government, the government, let's start by decentralizing and let's distributing the decisions that are essential to a town. The, the, the management of our resources of, of, and the uh, public investment, citizens, Citizens, let's keep what's going on. Keep an eye on what's going on in the public arena all the time, so that we can build something different and build something together. I can assure, assure you that we've never had so 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 much available, so so many available tools to be able to do this. And particularly, don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. We we can human human nature can do amazing things in terms of power. We've. We have seen this over the years. We will be able to, to create a democratic society. Thank you very much. Sorry about the bug there earlier on. Just something, before you, you came along, you said that you'd seen in 2009 that we could do something and Presumably, Brazil, Brazil was a, was a good was good ground for this. In France, there are initiatives. Uh, even listening to politicians, you know, there's, there's Hidalgo has got a participative uh, budget, and this this is, has moderate success, perhaps because because we're too skeptical, as we said earlier on, or perhaps we haven't found our own Miguel Lago. We have Michel Dulac. Um, how, how can you explain that the French aren't so, so, so in, involved in and, and think it's chaotic? Well, I think there are several reasons for this. I think the French state has always, has always looked after its citizens, which in fact is a different thing from Brazil. And I think that's the first and primary difference. And then, and then so th there's also a different level of education. And, 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 and people, the Fr France recognizes the, the in inequalities. Uh, I, I, I was schooled in France, you know, and, and we had to, we had to respect respect the teacher. But there was a certain a certain respect was due. Uh, I was a very I was a, was however a very good a very good pupil. Now, so what I really think is that is that the state, it's 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 difficult. Uh, sure, there is a crisis. And, and, and the state does amazing things. But I think in France, I think it's difficult to feel empowered. 
because we've always been used that the, the, the state uh, offers the citizens everything it wants, whereas in Brazil it's something slightly different. So when I'm talking about power and in favela, this is the production of power. These are, these are villages, entire villages, which have, have been built by their citizens. It's absolutely extraordinary. It's very poor, etc. There is a serious problem, but it's, it's extraordinary that people can actually manage uh, manage to build up their own uh, power base. Uh, so you, you, you did say that uh, Marie Antoinette would never have um, never have cut her own head off. Well, what about your own uh, president? No, I didn't say that she was. Uh, uh, that was the case. But we have uh, several. I, I think that the elections that are coming up, and I think we have several ways of of, 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 of moving forward. We have to wait for the next elections. And, and, and put pressure on the government in order that we can, they will listen to us. So if you, so if you want to, uh, to, to, to hear more about this and speak to uh, Miguel Lago, then please meet him after this session. Thank you very much.